you will get lot of motivation after clearing prelims obviously will get lot of motivation that motivation will help you to clear the mains examination with general studies with 450 marks take my word take my word as a big brother or a, or a teacher or an a faculty or an a mentor or anything take my word practice for 6 months consistently you will get lot of confidence that confidence will push you to prepare for prelims preparation prelims you will do well after clearing prelims also you will be very confident why because my first innings has been completed i am entering into the second innings and second innings answers will be very high quality then you have to compare with the toppers not now people will be worried and now only starting starting only they will be comparing with the toppers first we have to develop we have to develop after development what i missed and why topper didn't missed it see on the first day i cannot compete with osain bolt people in the first class only everyone will come sir send me his proper sheet toppers i will write like after practice after practice after practice you have to compare with osain bolt athlete osain bolt similarly now you start now you start now you start now you start then you will crack the examination 100% the consistency is the only mantra this is what which i want to tell you again i am repeating we don't want your admission we want your participation we want your involvement we want your answers we want your your all presence your preparation your hard work your effort your rank getting rank is not easy my dear students i am telling you on the first weekly test discussion class itself i am telling you UPSC examination is not that much easy. You took risky path, knowingly or unknowingly. Knowingly or unknowingly. Why you come late? Very good discussion was happening. This examination, risky examination. You choose a risky path. I am telling you, knowingly or unknowingly. When you choose the path, you have to crack it. for that you are the person who should be consistent you are the person who to work hard you are the person who should involve who you are the person who should participate without participation of you nowhere you are going to win this war nowhere you are going to win this war take my word i will start the tests discussion importance of long term answer writing practice importance of long term answer writing practice as i told you in the beginning the purpose of magic of mains is innings 1 and innings 2 before prelims 1 before prelims it is called as innings 1 and after prelims 1 it is called as prelims is called as innings 2 in innings 1 as i told you earlier you will be having 21 tests in 21 weekly tests you will be having daily tests micro schedule micro schedule micro test micro test so eventually 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 you will be growing and after the prelims when we enter into the second innings after clearing your prelims you will get immense boosting if you clear prelims that boosting of completion of innings 1 innings 2 will drive you to get 450 marks so if you want to improve your answer writing or any any anything practice is the only solution without practice you will go nowhere first question simple question i asked act of 1935 government of india act of 1935 provided a base for further constitution making in free india so the original base the original basement the original foundation the original base and the original foundation for the constitution of india or making of the constitution of india in the free india original constitution of india is from the government of india act of 1935 you know most of the provisions of the constitution is borrowed from which from government of india act of 1935 so why it is called as foundation that is my question but that is my question so how i will start i will start my if i if i write see my all discussions will be if i am going to write answer how i will write that will be the model answer for you how i will write i will start it is for for example if it is for guess 15 marks three pages if it is for 10 marks it is for two pages from last 3 4 years they are asking this questions 10 15 marker 10 10 marker 10 into 15 150 marks 10 into 10 marks 100 marks 150 plus 100 is 250 marks if it is for 25 if it is for 15 marks how i will write i will write the british had entered into india with the motto of three objectives economic drain political imperialism and 
cultural evangelization. In this, they consolidated their empire by the Government of India Act of 1858. With that, they want to provide the responsible government. And in the process of giving legislations for the welfare of the country, 1935 is notable legislation. Full stop. Second paragraph. The most of the provisions which are present in the today's constitution is borrowed from Government of India Act. So, most of the provisions we take from Government of India Act, we tell that the Government of India Act of 1935 was the base and the foundation for Constitution of India. What are those provisions which are taken from the Government of India Act of 1935? Then, one by one, one by one, one by one. See, I used three terms here in between. Number one is called as political imperialism, economic drain, third is Eva cultural evangelization means Christianity came into existence. So, in this three, they were being successful with what? Political imperialism by which they usurped the power of India and they started with responsible government from Government of India Act of 1858 and the major provisions were been from Government of India Act of 1935. The same is copied into the original constitution. So, what are the provisions which are copied from Government of India Act of 1935 into the constitution because of which we are telling Government of India Act of 1935 is the base and the foundation for constitution. Now, I will mention the provisions. What are the provisions because of which I am telling? Number one, establishment of Federation of India to be made up of provinces of British India and some are all the princely status. Establishment of Federation of India. A Federation of India was being formed. Nothing which is princely states provinces. Provinces now are called as states. Princely states also now became the part of states. So, it is a combination of provinces and princely states. So, a big federation has been formed. This federation system is again added into the constitution of India, but the government of India act which started with federation was been not implemented because princely state did not join the federation. First point. Second point. Provincial autonomy. Provincial autonomy. We gave autonomy to the provinces. Up to now, the provinces were been not having the autonomy. Now, the provinces is having autonomy. The same thing is present in our constitution also, whereby the state legislature, the state executive is having the power. They are enjoying the autonomy. They are not the subordinate to the central government, but they are the equals with central government, which is present in the constitution of India is borrowed from where? Government of India Act of 1935. Means, see the word is one word. You have to understand it now. How you are writing is very important. Third point, division of subjects between the center and the provinces. For the first time, 1919 government of India had divided powers into two, federal list and state list. Then government of India Act of 1935 divided into three. One is federal, other is state, other is concurrent. Other is concurrent. Division of powers. Today also it is there in our original constitution under 7th schedule of the constitution. What we took, where it is present in the original constitution. What it is, where it is present in the original constitution. What it is, where it is present in the original constitution. Then we are proving that, yes, the act of 1935 is the base of diarchy at the center. Diarchy at the center, this is one thing we have to remember. Diarchy at the center, there are two lists, one is called as Reserve list, other is called as transfer list. Why I mentioned this? This diarchy system is abolished and diarchy system is not present in our constitution. Then what I did? Not all provisions we took from Government of India Act of 1935. For example, in 1935 Act, there is diarchy is there, whereby two systems are there. There is a transfer list and reserve list. And the transfer list will be with the local ministers and the reserve list will, will be with the viceroy. We did not took this and we did not pass it into the constitution of India. Hence, we cannot tell that Government of India Act of 1935 is the only base for the formation of constitution. We also borrowed from other constitutions like American constitution, Japanese constitution, USSR constitution, Weimar constitution, but major provisions were been taken from Act of 1935. See, whoever missed the class, first 10 minutes compulsory watch. Come on time, please. Second question. Do you agree with some of the criticism made against the composition and working of the Constituent Assembly? Critically comment. Critically commented. 
that is the keyword critically comment today i will post one video please watch it keywords how to write answer if there is keywords in the questions like critically evaluate critically comment define discuss evaluate elaborate substantiate justify for all this i made one video i will be posting please watch it you will understand oh if it is critically comment or critically evaluate what i have to write critically comment means we have to write the positives we have to write the negatives but we have to give a balanced judgment which is 100% universally correct the constituent assembly there is a criticism on the composition of the constituent assembly like it is undemocratic people's representatives are not part of constituent assembly it is not sovereign body why because the constituent assembly is not made by the independent india but made by the cabinet mission plan of 1946 so it is not a sovereign body such type of criticisms are there on constituent assembly see the cabinet mission which visited india in 1946 on its recommendation a sovereign body the constituent assembly of india was formed to draft a constitution for the country but the criticism is it is not a representative body this is a very big criticism why because the complete constituent assembly people are the appointed people of the provinces are the appointed people of the princely states so the constituent assembly did not represent the people of the country hence the big criticism is the constituent assembly is not representative body i gave you not representative body you have to expand it you have to expand it number 2 not a sovereign body why because it is not formed by the independent india but it is formed by the cabinet mission plan of british india so it is not a sovereign body it is a body which is created by the foreign power so the constituent assembly is also not part of is also not called as sovereign body third time consuming they took you know they took 2 years 11 months 14 days for the completion of the constitution making why that was time man time consuming the criticism is time consuming dominated by the congress indian national congress most of the people who are present in the constituent assembly are congress so the ideology of the congress is present in the constitution of india why because constituent assembly is dominated by congress lawyer politician domination almost 80% of the members who are present in the constituent assembly are lawyer so they use a technical knowledge they use a technical jargon they use the technical words of the law lawyer politician domination dominated by hindus also the number of muslims present in the constituent assembly is less and dominated by hindus dominated by hindus so these are the criticisms on constituent assembly now question is what critical evaluate you have to mention however after india got independence the constituent assembly continued till 1950 and worked as the constitution making body in independent india hence we cannot tell that it's a sovereign body why because the body continued into the independent india hence it is a sovereign body who told it is not representative body it is representative body only why because the provincial provinces had choose some of the people who are the leaders in the local level they were been sent to the constituent assembly hence elections were been not conducted but the but the people of the constituent assembly are the aspirations of the people so it is not just so don't think it is undemocratic don't think it is non representative it is representative only who told it is dominated by hindus muslims are also present not only in national congress hindu dharma sabha is present all india muslim league is present cpi is present cpim is present cpi is present so all all political parties are present like this so first i, I will mention it then i will tell that it is not correct but finally what i will tell you know again but however but however we have to accept that the constituent assembly was been made by the british india but after independence it is continued into the independent india so we cannot tell that the constituent assembly is a non sovereign body it is a sovereign body only full stop you have to make a structure in your mind while writing an answer at least not on the mind on the paper first point like this you paragraph first paragraph four points like this first paragraph like this you have to do first para second para third para 
points points this so in the first para this point will be there this sentence will be there for example constituent assembly so first para first point constituent assembly i will write about second para second sentence i will write this third sentence i will write this second second para first sentence i will write this second sentence i will write so what happens you know if you make this structure in your rough book in when you are doing your answer writing practice for the first time you will not think for answer only one at the beginning only you will be thinking and you will be writing the structure next you will put the pen and you will be writing so the pen will be moving and you will be getting the confidence and you will be running on running on running on first first paragraph you make a structure second paragraph you make a structure third paragraph you make a structure like this third question act 1919 which is also called as government of india act of 1919 because of montego james ford reforms government of india act of 1919 came into existence was an act of the british parliament that sought to increase the participation of indians in the administration so the question is not asking about government of india act provisions they are not asking about uh, expansion of uh, communal electorate you should not write about communal expansion of elect communal electorate these all things you have to not mention what mainly mainly means one point you have to mention the last but mainly it is talking with respect to participation of people in administration from government of india act of 1990 allowing the local people to become part of the government allowing the local people to become part of the administration is a demand of the question so i have to prove that yes government of india act of 1919 yes it is responsible for the participation of yes it is responsible for the participation of different section of people in the administration introduction of diarchy at the provincial level so there is transferred list there is reserve list but understand this transfer list means local transfer list will be convert it will be controlled by whom local ministers means participation as local ministers are participating and the local people are getting the power on the transfer list true provincial government subjects were separated into two divisions center and state proper division this will be doing by central government this will be doing by state government yes participation third bicameralism was been introduced in the central legislative assembly by this act the power house was the the lower house was the legislative assembly with 145 members serving three year terms and the upper house was the council of states with 60 members serving five year terms for the first time the bicameralism came into existence by the name called as central legislative assembly and council of states central legislative assembly and council of states so what central legislative assembly means local participation 145 members council of state means local participation 60 members are locals they are becoming part of bicameralism this points not the points which are present in lakshmikant something exploration participation of people according to act of 1990 communal representation also 1909 government of india separate electorate only for muslims But 1919, they gave separate electorate for whom? Sikh, Europeans, Anglo Indians, more participation. Sikh people also having communal separate electorate, so they also participated. Europeans also participated. Indo, Anglo Indians also part, but mainly Sikhs participated. Why? Because Sikhs are local people. Sikhs participated apart from the franchise right of voting was also granted, but only to a limited number of people. There was a provision to provide reservation to the non-Brahmins in Madras, new points, and the depressed classes were also offered nominated seats in the legislature. Means what? Local participation is increasing. Non-Brahmins are becoming part of the legislature. Non-Brahmins are becoming the part of legislature. Depressed classes, the people of depressed classes were being appointed in nominated posts. Question is what? Increase the participation of Indians. increase the participation of indians so indians are getting participated in madras non brahmins were became part depressed classes were became part separate electorate muslims became part sikhs became part central legislative assembly 145 members council of state 60 members became part so people are getting participated in the administration by the government of india act of not only this in the viceroy executive council 
out of four eight members who are present in the viceroy executive council compulsory three should be indian means in the executive council of the viceroy also three indians are present means indians participation is increased because of the act of 1990 see i am i am not discussing about see again i am telling you any answer you write read the question three four times it's not about writing what you know it's about writing what question demand is the question demand is act of 1999 is elaborating the participation of indians in administration how 1 2 3 4 5 after the class after the class again you write your own answer how i explain whether you are writing in the same format or not if you write finish you are on the line fourth standard of question is increasing fraternity what is fraternity universal brotherhood is called as fraternity fraternity remains the least understood yes fraternity remains the least understood common brotherhood means between boys and girls or what it is common brotherhood it is least understood a brotherhood between boys within the means it is within the muslims or within the hindus or between hindus and muslims or between the marathi speaking people and gujarati speaking people or between tamil speaking people and the marathi speaking people so there is a lot of confusion with respect to fraternity who is my brother my caste peer person is my brother or other caste person is my brother my region person is my brother or other region person is my brother so the fraternity meaning is indians that is the reason we have single citizenship so we have we need to have a universal brotherhood for the citizenship whoever is having indian citizenship those all are our universal brotherhood irrespective of the religion irrespective of the language irrespective of the region irrespective of the gender irrespective of the caste the nationality is the topmost the citizenship is the topmost sense of common brotherhood transcending religion language regional or sectional diversities article 50 where it is present in the constitution if i write answer for this i will write like this indian constitution under article 51 clause a mentioned about fundamental duties in which they envisaged in which they envisaged a common brotherhood among the citizens of the country bypassing the diversities with respect to religion race caste gender birth everyone should have a we feeling everyone should have a brotherly feeling towards the other citizen of the country because of which we have a common citizenship which is called a single citizenship this is to be promoted through what single citizen fraternity is an important element for a strong nation state that encompasses diversity and in a country like india i told you harsha same thing you have to do i told you know that you have to expand only those points are there in the answer 1919 10 marker it is those points you have to expand so how you will expand because of the participation the people will think that yes the british government is doing good for them the people will be getting political knowledge and because of the people gaining the political knowledge a participation has been increased so the british thought that i am providing welfare so the people will not ask for independence that is the case see why they provided participation so british want to tell that i am i am giving you importance so now you don't ask for independence see in a country like india there is a huge diversity the cultural heritage of india is diversity religion race language region huge diversity is there so when huge diversity is there a small incident is there can enough to make a conflict to make a division so at that particular junction or a country like india what we need to have more importantly when a fraternity is there when we feeling is there when brotherly feeling is there then the people will not think that they are alienated the people will not think that they are separate the people will not think that they are diverse and the people will participate in the country affairs hence the people will be moving on moving on moving on so the fraternity is most important aspect of india if fraternity loses the country will divide into pieces when fraternity loses country will be divided into so compulsory fraternity is the most important aspect fraternity remains the least understood least discussed also and the least practiced of the four pillars of constitutional morality 
spelt out in the preamble of India's constitution and from its constitution also derives the unity of the nation. Also derives the unity of the nation in this way, the importance of it. This has been cherished due nationalist freedom struggle also reminded by 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act by adding the word what? Integrity. When we have fraternity, then only we can have integrity of the country. Integrity can be protected only by, see understand the question first. Fifth question. Discuss each adjective. Yes, Rajesh, any doubt? If you, you can, Rajesh, this is raising your hand. You can speak now, Rajesh. Bolo. No, yes, yes, tell me. The, please explain the concept of morality in the question. Ah, see, listen. So, here, simple constitutional morality. The constitutional morality is what are the morals we learned from the constitution of India? What are the morals we learned from the constitution of India? Secularism, socialism, unity, integrity, sovereignty. So, this constitutional morality, if I want to protect, how it can be protected? By fraternity. Hindu, Muslim, bye bye, common brotherhood, secularism will flourish. It might be rich. He might be poor. If the government is taking care about the rich and the poor, same. Socialism will flourish. Unity. When everyone is having a we feeling, when everyone is having a universal brotherhood feeling, then integrity. Sovereignty. How sovereignty? Sovereignty because yes, this government is helping us. There is no difference. Everyone is seen with same importance. So, sovereignty. Yes, I want to be in this country. My sovereign country is Delhi. My sovereign country is India. So, the constitutional morality is the morals which are coming from the constitution like secularism, socialism, integrity, sovereignty. This all can be protected by only one. What is that? Fraternity. And that fraternity is least discussed, least understood, least practiced. Remains the least understood, least discussed, least practice of the four pillars of constitutional morality. What are the four pillars of the constitutional morality? I told you now. Secularism, socialism, uni integrity and sovereignty. These are the four pillars of constitutional morality. For these four pillars of constitutional morality, what is the only solution? Fraternity, universal brotherhood. Got it, Rajesh? If you got, yes. If not, no. Tell something. Discuss. See, I am linking preamble. The topic is original preamble. Preamble and historical underpinnings. Discuss each adjective. What are the adjectives which are present? Sovereign, socialist, secular, integrity, fraternity. Uh, one more is there. What is it? Democracy is there. Republic is there. Yes, more. Discuss each adjective attached to the word republic in the preamble and objectives. Sovereignty, sociality, socialist, secularism, democracy, these all are ensuring republic. So, what is sovereignty you have to mention about? What is socialism you have to mention about? So what is secularism you have to mention about? What is democracy you have to mention about? The question is, look into it, discuss each adjective attached to the word republic. See, republic, republic means what? Head of the state is elected. Republic means what? Head of the state is elected. When the country is sovereign, then only the head of the state will be there. When the country is sovereign, then only the head of the state will be republic. And the head of the state is elected, then it is called as socialist. Republic ensures what? Welfare. And the welfareism can be guaranteed only when there is socialism. Secularism. Republic ensures what? Equality. Republic ensures what equality? Equality between the religions. No religion is supreme, no religion is inferior. Means what? Secularism. Republic is what? Head of the state is elected. By what procedure? By democratic procedure. So, what is sovereignty? Ensuring republic. Socialist. What is socialist? Ensuring republic. Secular. What is secular? Ensuring republic. What is democracy? Ensuring are they def defendable in the present circumstances? Now, are they defendable or whether we are losing our republicness? No. We follow sovereignty, we follow socialism, we follow secularism, we follow democracy. But however, negative we have to tell no one point. But however, because of the, because of the parochial political interests, 
because of the parochial political interests the importance which are associated with the republic is coming down but however because the constitution itself is becoming the supreme because of the idea of basic structure doctrine the adjectives which are present in the preamble is protected objective this is very important objective resolution people will not study this objective resolution bear act i brought this from bear act compulsory you have to read bear act but not necessary i am covering in the daily questions objective resolution laid down the fundamentals and philosophy what is objective resolution in 1946 objective resolution was been made objective resolution of 1946 reflects aspirations and values of the indians it was a moral committee expressed by makers of the constitution towards our key values of equality liberty democracy nehru introduced an objective resolution a resolution that outlined the assembly's goal constituent assembly's goal in 1946 before the constitution making body the aims and principles that drove the creation of the constitution were embodied in this resolution so in 1946 we have a objective resolution means nehru had laid before the constitution making body which is called as constituent assembly how our constitution should be there how our constitution should ensure liberty equality democracy republic etc so that our constitution is made upon the blueprint of objective resolution like for example when i am making question paper what is my objective resolution syllabus when i am making a question paper what is my objective resolution syllabus according to syllabus only i have to make the question paper so the syllabus is objective resolution and the output is constitution of india and who passed this objective resolution this are present objective resolution provided the foundation for india's constitution which institutionalized the essential values of equality right about equality liberty right about liberty democracy right about democracy sovereignty right about sovereignty cosmopolitan identity means togetherness cosmopolitan identity means cosmopolitan identity means staying together being together in spite of differences very good in spite of differences secularism in spite of differences staying together in spite of difference in region staying together in spite of difference in languages staying together in spite of difference in races staying together north east india are mongoloid people south india are negroid people Well, North India are Caucasian people, but still, we are staying. That is what which is envisaged in the objective resolution. This is what which is envisaged in the objective resolution of 1946. This solidified the moral resolve to form a government that will carry out the many promises by the nationalist movements of the to the Indian people. The preamble to the constitution is based on this resolution, which was overwhelmingly accepted on. January twenty two, nineteen forty seven. So the objective resolution, which was being made in nineteen forty six, was accepted in January twenty two, nineteen forty seven. That our constitution is going to fulfill all the aspects which are present in the objective resolution. What are present? Equality, liberty, democracy, sovereignty, and cosmopolitan. Equality, liberty, democracy, sovereignty, and cosmopolitan. Right. So today's constitution is result of what? objective resolution like syllabus copy the syllabus copy is objective resolution and the question paper is constitution so whatever the question paper is out is from the syllabus only no so objective resolution is most important the resolution was made in 1946 november and accepted in january november 1946 and accepted in january 1947 describe the procedure of amendment of the constitution factual question i asked of India under Article three sixty eight. I will write this. See how I, if I am writing an answer, how I will write. The forefathers of the Constitution envisaged that any Constitution cannot be static. With the time, the Constitution also must change. Hence, they made liberal Constitution so that the Constitution can be amended. but however they also made the constitution rigid why because they want to maintain the core principles of the constitution hence we can call indian constitution as rigid as well as liberal in that particular context under part 20 of the constitution under article 368 there is a procedure for constitutional amendment write about the constitutional amendment 
द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अमेंडमेंट कैन हैपन बाई स्पेशल मेजोरिटी इन लोकसभा स्पेशल मेजोरिटी इन राज्यसभा एंड फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द स्टेट असेंबलीज एक्सेप्टिंग विद मिनिमम मेजोरिटी if any federal features are affected if no federal features are affected in lok sabha by special majority and rajya sabha by special majority if federal features are not impacted this is the mechanism for constitutional amendment up to now we have nearly 108 constitutional amendment acts and the most important constitutional amendments acts are 42 44 73 74 etc like this i will write answer my answer will go like this the constitution of india provides for its amendment in order to adjust itself to the changing conditions and needs article 368 in part 20 of the constitution deals with the powers of parliament to amend the constitution and its procedure direct question miss you will write about uh, the procedure what is special majority you will write uh, there is whether joint sitting is there for constitutional amendment no there is no joint sitting for constitutional amendment. whether constitutional amendment want to prior prior approval of the president think whether rajesh tell me the answer whether prior approval of president is required for constitutional amendment act for money bill we want prior approval of the president then what about constitutional amendment act very good radhika no no need only for money bill we want the prior permission of president of only for money bill we want the prior permission of president if not not required as well as article 3 also what is article 3 bifurcation of the states when there is bifurcation of the states also we want the prior permission of president for constitutional amendment act there is no joint sitting there is no prior approval of president then you will write about the procedure easy question discuss various features of indian secularism Also mention various threat to secular democracy in India. How I will write answer for this? See, see, this is this is not GS classes. This is not general studies classes. To tell you the concept, you are writing main test series means already you know the subject. You are just proving yourself whether what you studied is correct or wrong. If I am writing answer for this, what I will write? The basic structure of the Constitution of India is secularism. under article 25 26 27 28 it is clearly mentioned that every citizen of india is free to choose his religion no one can force him no one can pressurize him to choose any religion so secularism is a basic structure of the indian constitution first i i discuss about indian constitution but the question is about various features of indian secularism next i will explain about it is a 15 mark second there are two varieties of secularism are there one is indian model of secularism and western model of secularism in indian model of secularism the state will be involving in the state state will be involving in the religious affairs and looking at the, all the religions equally but in western model of secularism the state is separate from the church the state is away from the religion so we adopted the indian model of secularism whereby the state will be involving in the affairs of the religion and looks at all religions equally third paragraph now i am going for third paragraph mention various threats to secular democracy in india this secular democracy in india which is also present in the constitution which is also present in the preamble of the constitution which is added by 42nd constitution amendment act is under threat again i bought constitution and again one more time i i showed to the evaluator that i remembered constitution there is a threat for secularism so i explain threat to secularism in two contexts pre independence post independence in pre independence bengal partition 1905 bengal partition on the lines of religion bengal got partition on the lines of religion number 2 1909 morley mentor reform separate electorate for muslims number 3 in british times christian missionaries came into northeast india and they started evangelizing the people partition of india into india and pakistan happened on the lines of religion so because of this factors which happened in pre independence times there is threat to secularism post independence poverty and uneven development when i am hunger 
If someone tells that you are hunger because that religious people take you took your resources, then I will get angry. Poverty and even development. Hindu Mahasabha, All India Muslim League political party, Babri Masjid issue. So these are all the pro post independence factors which are responsible for communalism in a way which is responsible for threat to secularism. But next paragraph. However, we can address. We can protect and conserve the secularism just by following the constitutional safeguard. By having by by having a ideology of Ganga, Jamuna, Tehjeeb. Like these sentences, catchy sentences you have to use. Ganga, Yamuna we should not use. Jamuna we have to use. Ganga, Jamuna, Tehjeeb. Ganga is Hindu, Jamuna is Muslim. Ganga, Jamuna, Tehjeeb. Such type of systems will stop communalism and enhance secularism. Hence, we can address the threat to secularism. Yes or no, Rajesh? Discuss various reasons of creating union territories in India. What are the various reasons which are responsible for the creation of union territories in India? Discuss the various reasons which are responsible for the creation of union territories in India. How union territories are different from states in political and administrative reasons, cultural distinctiveness. For example, Daman and Dio and Dadar Nagar Haveli, they are culturally different. Pondicherry is culturally different, they have French culture. Goa earlier a union territory was culturally different. Now Ladakh, a union territory culturally different, cultural factor is also one factor. Andaman Nikobar, political and administrative factor, why? Because it is present in the Indian Ocean, it is present in the strategic location. If we give autonomy and if we declare it as a state, there is a hundred percent chance that China might occupy Andaman Nicobar Islands. So the Andaman Nicobar is, Islands is located in the strategic location, Lakshadweep is located in the strategic location. We need to have a more political care on it. So we kept it as union with examples. I am telling you why they are union territories, why there is not union territories. For example, Chandigarh, there is a conflict between the Punjab and Haryana in 1966. For the sake of Chandigarh, in order to solve the case, administrative convenience, for the sake of political reason, in order to solve the conflict between the Punjab and Haryana, the central government came up with a innovative idea that Chandigarh will be a union territory. Delhi is a national capital region. When any region which is a national capital, it, should, it, it need to have a special protection. And the special protection can be given by central government, but not by the state government. Why? Because armed forces, Paramilitary forces are with central government or state government? Central government. So, it is a national capital region. Delhi is a union territory. One, one reason. These are all the factors. General factors are political administrative reasons, cultural strategic. See, Andaman Nicobar Island and Nakshadweep. Special treatment and care of the backward and tribal people. Special treatment for Backward. In Andaman Nicobar Islands also, there are tribals are there. For them, central government will have a very good vision. So, it made a union territory. First, I want you to write more answers. So, I gave only 10 questions. Next, slowly, slowly, I will be increasing to 20 questions. I have no problem in giving 20 questions. I want you to write answers daily basis. I want you to be consistent every day. <coughs> if I give questions and if you don't write, that is not my purpose of magic of means. My purpose of magic of means means you have to participate. Who missed the class first 15 minutes compulsory, watch it. You will get very good knowledge on it. Current affairs question. I told you one question will be there on current affairs. Current affair question. Understand this. The crisis of our time and it is happening even more quickly than we feared. It is happening even more quicker. What? Climate change. Deepening the climate emergency has been promoted by climate activists. Deepening the climate emergency means, deepening means sorrow. Feeling sorrow of the climate emergency Deepening means feeling sorrow. Feeling sorrow of climate emergency, like health emergency, has been promoted by climate activists. Climate activists are telling, see, a climate emergency is coming, we have to do something, we have to do something. And pro-climate action politicians, to add a sense of urgency for responding to a long-term problem, what is a long-term problem? Climate change is a long-term problem. 
climate change is a long term problem, critically analyze it, now analyze it, how I will write the answer, how I will write the answer. In the process of development, there is an issue of environment protection, because environment and development are both are contrary to each other. When we go for a development, the environment will be affected. When the environment we go, the development will be affected. If both need to go hand in hand, we need to have a eco-friendly approach. Why? Because the near danger is climate change. The near danger is climate change. Why? Because the near danger is climate change, which we can, ex which we can experience by increasing the sea level. Raise of sea level. Because of which there are islands which are getting submerged under the water. Hence, it is a climate emergency, we have to protect the. So, next, what are the factors responsible for climate change? How to address the climate change? What are the international conventions? What are the steps taken by the government of India is the answer. This is the previous question. This is previous year question. Understanding the question is very important. It is not about writing an answer, it is not about you know the content or not. First, understand the question what they want to ask. See why I mentioned politicians because you are to write about international conventions, UNFCC, CBD, Con Conservation Biodiversity, Nagoya Protocol, Ozone Depletion, these all are politicians only, no? Intended nationally determined climate contributions, INDCC, IPCC, Inter Intergovernmental Planet on Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Who made this? Politicians made this. Final conclusion, for the sustainable development of the world, not country, for the sustainable development of the country, the first and the foremost which needs to be addressed is climate change. Why? Because climate is a, why? Because climate is a global common. It is common for every citizen of the world. Climate is a common for every citizen of the globe. It is not for you, it is not for me, it is not for Pakistan, it is not for India, it is not for Maldives, it is not for USA. For everyone it is a global common. So, the time of the day is protection of the global commons, full stop. Catchy word, catchy sentence, catchy phrase if you use you will get marks, one mark extra. This is about your first test discussion. Any doubts anyone? See write answers every day on daily basis, be consistent, okay, clear? My dear students, clear? Friends, please everyone write today's test, test 2, okay, do not neglect. <coughs>